Let's take a look at a spring question, but specifically a spring question where the forcing function, the outside function, is something discontinuous. So we're going to model it with the heavy side step function. Okay, let's read through the question. A uh, spring mass two kilograms hands, hangs on a, a mass of two kilograms uh, hangs on a spring. You can read this easier than me, maybe. <laughs> uh, with a spring constant of four. The force of friction is six times velocity. Okay, before we finish up there, our, our model for a spring equation is mass times y prime prime, that's force in newtons, plus c times y prime, that's also in newtons, but that's force of friction, plus k times y, that's also a force, but the force from the spring. So basically, the mass and the coefficient of friction and the spring constant go in that spot. From the very first uh, sentence, we've got the mass is 2, the coefficient of friction is 6, and the spring constant is 4. So we've already got this side of the differential equation figured out, the linear second order constant coefficient differential equation. Now let's look for the forcing function. An outside force, so the forcing function, of 8 newtons pushes the mass for 7 seconds and then stops. So I'm going to model that with a heavy side step function. So here's the u. That highlighted u is 0 before, uh, before 7 seconds and 1 after 7 seconds. So if that highlighted u is 0 before 7 seconds, then this g of t is just 8. All right, it for, uh, outside pu pushes for 8 with 8 newtons for 7 seconds. Then at 7 seconds, this u becomes 1, and whatever's in the square bracket has to add to the 8 to make the whole thing 0. So minus 8. So after 7 seconds, this u is 1. So it's 8 plus 1 times minus 8, 0. So here's our equation that models the that models this, the movement on the spring, the mass on the spring. Now we're just going to solve it. Now I look at that highlighted thing, and it's just linear second order, constant coefficient, non-homogeneous differential equation. It's got a heavy side step, so we're going to solve it with Laplace. I need to know the initial conditions if I'm going to do Laplace. Um, they say the mass is originally at rest, so y prime is equal to zero, at equilibrium, so y is not is equal to zero. So the two initial conditions are zero. Now, before I jump into Laplace, let's make a note of the eigenvalues, just because I find it guides me. So here's our auxiliary equation, which factors, and I get the eigenvalues of minus 2 and minus 1. So real eigenvalues. So this spring is overdamped, has real and different eigenvalues. All right, now let's jump into the actual Laplace part. I'm going to take the Laplace of this equation. So 2 times, that's what we got here. Zip. So the story is basically over, and we're just doing the math now. So here's my differential equation with the heavy side step function in it. I've moving into the Laplace world. The highlighted is the Laplace of y prime prime. The highlighted is the Laplace of y prime. And then the Laplace of y is just f. So here's my Laplace of the left-hand side. The Laplace of 8, 8 over s, straight from the chart. Now heavy side step function. The heavy side step function turning on at 7 seconds becomes the e to the minus 7s. Now, what's inside the square bracket? Everywhere there's a t, I know there's no t, but the process. Everywhere there's a t, I want to put a t plus 7. Okay, there is no t, so I can't put a t plus 7, but I still should be thinking about that in case there's a t. After I've replaced all the t's with t plus 7, then I take the Laplace transform of it. So now I'm taking the Laplace transform of minus 8. That's minus 8 over s. So now I'm in the Laplace world. Let's put in the initial conditions. That just means make all that y not 0 and the y prime not 0. So all of those pieces go to 0. And I can factor out an f. And here's the auxiliary equation. 
that I had factored before when I looked for the eigenvalues. So I'm going to factor it again. And now I'm solving for f. So I'm dividing everything by those two brackets. So here's me solved for f. Notice the way that I've got it set up. This e to the minus 7s is multiplied by everything in this square bracket. So everything highlighted in that square bracket, that's what gets turned on by the heavy side step function at 7 seconds. Okay, I've solved for f. We're, we want to unlaplace this. We want to take the inverse Laplace of this. So I'm going to need to do partial fractions on this first piece, this outside piece. So the factors are, um, well, I've, the factors are a over, you see s plus 2, but I, I guess I factored this 2 out first. And then I canceled that 2 with the, I canceled that 2 with the 8. I guess I don't have to do that, but it makes it nicer. Now my factors are uh, s, s plus 1. 2 and s plus 1. Let's do the same thing over here just because it makes the process a little neater. Okay, so now I want to do partial fractions with that. I've already done partial fractions. I'm going to just leave, you, uh, leave it up to you to check to do the partial fractions. And I get a is equal to 2 b is equal to minus 4. Now this partial fractions will be pretty straightforward because um, there's not repeated roots or anything so uh, it's going to be three good choices for s, plug in, get a and b and c. It'll be super straightforward. Now we still have to do partial fractions on the inside piece as well but I note that the inside the square bracket piece is the same as the outside the square bracket piece except for there's a big minus sign. So all of the coefficients are just going to be negative. They're just going to be negative what we got before. So I'll just do that. I'll make them all negative. And then there's my partial fractions of the inside piece. Okay. So let's start again here so we're more in the middle. All right. I'm going to unlaplace this. So the inverse Laplace of f is y. This, using the chart, 2 over uh, s plus 2, that's going to be 2 e to the negative 2t. There's that negative eigenvalue. Minus 4 e to the negative 1t. There's that other negative eigenvalue. Remember, this one is overdamped. Uh, plus the inverse Laplace of 2 over s is 2 plus Okay, now I'm at heavy side step function. This e to the minus 4, uh, 7 asta is going to un undo, is going to unlaplace to heavy side step function at t minus 7. And now the square bracketed piece. So this square bracketed piece, it would normally unlaplace to be minus 2 e to the minus 2t plus 4 e to the minus t minus 2. That's what it would normally on the plus to be. But because it's turned on by the heavy side step function, everywhere there's a t, I have to replace that with the t minus 7. So the argument inside the heavy side step function, the square bracketed piece has to match the argument of the heavy side step function. That just means turn all my t's into bracket t minus sevens and now I'm done. If I want to check to make sure that the things are, are going properly, a couple of you know sanity checks let's say. If I make t equal to seven, this square bracketed piece should be zero. So if t equals 7, e to the zeros are 1, so I get minus 2 plus 4 minus 2. That works. If I check the initial condition, at least let's check the first initial condition, it has to go through the origin. When t is equal to 0, y has to be equal to 0. When I make t equal to 0, 
this u is 0, so this whole piece is gone. When I make t equal to 0, I get e to the 0 is 1. So 2 minus 4 plus 2, that is 0, so that works. If you wanted to, you could check the derivative of this piece when t is equal to 0 and make sure that it starts at rest as like a third sanity check. But I'm pretty happy with what's here.